music, nigga. So. What's up, y'all? Peace. So, I'm gonna do videos where I just read articles that I feel not being uh, pushed by mainstream media, even though it's kind of out there, all over the internet, in my opinion. But here's one article from Vienna, Austria. So here it goes. Did the first coronavirus lockdown turn into one giant reality show? Scientists in Australia, in Austria, excuse me, say COVID quarantine allowed them to conduct a live social experiment, revealing how men and women behave very differently during a pandemic. In a crisis, the study finds women tend finds women tend to, to make significantly longer phone calls and follow government measures more closely than men. Moreover, men are less likely to accept restrictions in their movement due to lockdown measures and tend to return to normal more quickly than women. Experts at the at Complexity Science Hub Vienna say these cliché behavioral patterns cropped up during the first COVID-19 lockdown back in spring of 2020. Using data from the first lockdown, the researchers evaluated mobile phone data from 1.2 million Austrians between February and June of last year. The total shutdown of public life was like a population-wide live experiment, researcher Tobias Reich said, says in a media release. At the time, CSH received access to anonymous mobile data from a major Austrian internet service provider, which the scientists used to observe people's social mobility behavior. We were interested in the extent to which people supported the anti-corona measures imposed by the government, Reich adds. When we analyzed the data by gender, we found surprisingly strong behavioral differences between men and women. Women rely on their phones during crisis. Their findings revealed that people in general made much longer phone calls right after the lock lockdown began. Interestingly, they talked to fewer people than usual, but these were few. They spoke longer, Rice continues. Phone calls about women lasted significantly longer, but there were di big differences depending on who they were talking to. After the first lockdown in Austria started on March 16, 2020, calls for from women to other women measures measured 1.5 times longer than before the pandemic. Phone calls from men, and women, men to women lasted nearly twice as long. The study also reveals that Women called men. They talked on the phone for 80% longer, while the duration of calls between men rose by 66%. Of course, we don't know the content or purpose of these calls, notes um, George Heiler, a researcher at the CHA at the Vienna University Technology. Yet literal literature from the social scientists provide evidence, mostly from small Surveys, polls, or interviews that women tend to choose more active strat strategies to cope with stress, such as talking with others. Our study will confirm that. Men are ready to move on from COVID. The team also discovered that pre-existing social differences between men and women were amplified by the lockdown with women going out far less than men using data from large recreational area and the shopping mall in Vienna. The researchers found that more men visited both regions during the lockdown. After the national health restrictions ended, the CSH team observed that men also returned more quickly to their pre-pandemic lives and behavioral patterns. I guess it means like me. This study shows once again that data, in this case telecommunication data, allows us to gain social insights quickly and at a low cost without violating the anonymity. The anonymity of the individuals explains Stefan Thurner, uh, the president of CSH and the report's co-author. We see people's behavior in, in the here and now without the need to large surveys of thousands of people. On the one hand, this offers quantitative support for research questions in psychology and the social sciences, including interesting new questions emerging from data evaluation. Uh, concludes. On the other hand, we are providing concrete information for policymakers, which can either be used for planning in an acute crisis or flow into more targeted health planning, or could even lead to considerations on how to achieve more a more gender equi equi equitable society. The findings appear in the journal Scientific Reports. Southwest News Service writer George Georgia Lambert contributed to this report. So. 
so for them it was just uh, an experiment to see how men and women behave kind of sounds like something that happened in Oklahoma here in the states back in um, I believe it was 2001 or 2002 I think it was 2002 so you, you get from where you get from that you know what I'm saying Um, you know, I get these news that pops up in my 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 other phone. So let me see if if there'll be another one here. I'm trying to find one of the other articles that I thought was interesting, but there's no scientific backing on, on the lockdowns. You know what I'm saying? All it did it, it hurt the economy. Economy is already falling apart, but kind of made it worse. You know, you know, you can go to certain parts of Manhattan. It's just blocks of stores is just gone forever. Wait, wait, wait. Rachel, you know, if somebody wants to rent them, fine. But so far, it's been two years. So many spaces have been empty for more than that. Um, let me see. Let me see this article here. Joe Biden propaganda article. Um, some of these articles are real suspect, but some of them are, are interesting. There's also one article, I'm not going to read it, but it says influenza vaccine could also help against severe COVID-19. I had something, most likely probably was influenza like 11 years ago. I was sick for like three weeks, so it is possible that I might be immune to COVID, but I have to do like an antibody test. I don't know who Dean Snyder is, but he thinks that all people like me who don't get vaccinated will be dead by 2022. Eh, no, not true. See how they scare people though? That could scare somebody. articles but I want to read one let's get one more in this is interesting so let me just read this one let me read this one okay this is from blaze media news from a study the article is by Chris Pandolfo Pandolfo there's no difference in COVID-19 viral load between vaccinated and unvaccinated symptomatic or asymptomatic okay a new study finds that there is no significant difference in COVID-19 viral loads between vaccinated and unvaccinated individuals who test positive for infection regardless of whether they have symptoms or not the preprint study from UC Davis, which has not yet been peer reviewed. So this is not an article that's been peer reviewed. So why are they putting this out? If it's not peer reviewed, why put it out? I don't understand. Suggests that when it comes to policy making and how to mitigate spread of COVID-19, vaccine status might not matter much for mask mandates or social distancing requirements. The reason is higher viral loads make the virus more transmissible and it appears both vaccinated and unlike people who catch the Delta variant of COVID-19 have a high viral load. This is not... Anyway, let me finish reading this. Given the substantial proportion of asymptomatic vaccine breakthrough cases with high viral levels, 
interventions, including masking and testing, should be considered for all end settings with elevated COVID-19 transmission to study other strikes. It. Though studies have shown that the various COVID-19 vaccines appear to be successful at reducing the infection, severe disease, hospitalization, and death from the virus, it's not true. The study suggests that a fully vaccinated person with a breakthrough case of COVID-19 who has no symptoms is just as capable of spreading the virus to other people as an unvaccinated person who is sick but has no symptoms. They shed the virus, so when you get vaccinated, and the, vac the vaccine itself has the remnants of the virus. So once they inject that virus into you, you have it. That's why uh, supposedly your body gets immune after you get vaccinated, you know what I'm saying? Because it has remnants of cor coronavirus or some form of COVID-19. But now you have it, and now you can give it to somebody else. It's kind of like um, releasing a chemical into one person, and then he, when he opens his mouth, I'm just you know using sci-fi language. That chemicals are spread, and anybody else can breathe it in, and anybody can catch it. That's what it, basically it does, though. When you take a vaccine, that's what's in the vaccine, among other things. You know what I'm saying? This is not me saying this. The data gathered in this study during the surge of the Delta variant strongly support the notion that neither vaccine status nor the presence or absence of symptoms should influence the recommendation and implementation, implementation of good public health practices, the study says. In other words, the researchers are saying masking and testing requirements should apply to both unvaccinated and vaccinated people since both groups transmit the Delta variant at about equal rates. That's if people are getting the Delta, Delta variant frequently and not not here in New York I mean this has not been peer reviewed so I don't know why they put this all the out here but it's interesting and it shows, it says a lot about Blaze Media the fact that Blaze Media were, are willing to put something out that hasn't been peer reviewed as study author David Coyle explained to the David Enterprise, Davis Enterprise we really wanted to focus on this public health message which is that our data show there are a lot of Asymptomatic people that have high viral loads. There are a lot of vaccinated people that have high viral loads, and there are kids that have high viral loads. Coyle said there are misconceptions that children aren't spreading the virus, or that if someone is vaccinated and has no symptoms, they don't need to take precautions. The fact that we really see high viral loads in all these different populations suggests that public health messaging should be more universally applied. This, he said the study authors gathered data from individuals who voluntarily sought testing for COVID-19 in two different areas of California over a two-month period from June 17 to August 34. Samples were collected from a community-based testing site in the Michigan, Michigan Mission District of San Francisco as well as the city of Davis and Yolo County. A total of 869 positive samples were collected with 500 from Yolo County and 369 from Mission District testing site. Every sample from Yolo County was from an asymptomatic person and 75% of the samples from San Francisco were from unvaccinated individual, individuals. Both symptomatic and asymptomatic samples were collected from the San Francisco site. In our study, mean viral loads were similar for, for large numbers of asymptomatic and symptomatic individuals infected with SARS-CoV-2 during the Delta surge. Regardless of vaccine status, age, or gender, the study found. One note, Coyle told the Davis Enterprise that carrying a high viral load does not necessarily mean you would transmit the virus to someone else, just that you're more likely to do so. And scientists believe that the viral load in vaccinated persons drop more quickly than in unvaccinated persons, which is another reason to get vaccinated. Additionally, while breakthrough cases happen, people are still less likely to catch COVID-19 if they're, they've been vaccinated. Or if... Again, this, this article's not been peer reviewed, but I haven't been vaccinated and I haven't got it. And there's a lot of people that haven't got vaccines. You know, I mean, I barely know anybody. I know two people that had it and they went back to, I mean, he got it severely and he went back to work. Um, you know, so this is a serious thing when you get it. Yes, we see the same amount of virus in the vaccinated and unvaccinated individuals, but the probability of any given person giving getting affected isn't the same but the main argument of the study is that when it comes to public health policies vaccination status is not a good indicator of whether an individual needs to abide by COVID-19 restrictions to make to 
requirement cover restrictions like mask mandate or testing mask requirements shouldn't be just based on symptoms and vaccination status but because someone that is vaccinated or asymptomatic or both may still be shedding a significant a significant amount of virus and a mask would dramatically limit their ability to do so there's just a lot of people who carry the infection asymptomatic and they have comparably high viral loads to people who are symptomatic again we don't know that the results in a comparable rate of transmission probably not just because if one of your symptoms is coughing coughing is a really good way to eject viral particles out in the air when you are asymptomatic and just breathing you're probably doing less of that but you still have a lot of virus replicating in your upper respiratory tract that you could be shedding. So I think this highlights the importance and need to test for testing because you can't just wait for symptoms. Everybody should be testing regularly. Other studies have addressed the, the effectiveness, effectiveness of COVID-19 mitigation, mitigation strategies like mask wearing. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recently published new research that suggests school, district, school districts that mandate mask wearing have fewer cases of COVID-19 than districts without mandate. Okay, you know, that's basically, I'm not going to read the whole article. It's, it's almost finished. Now. So, mm, a lot of falsehoods in that article was from Blaze News and it wasn't peer review. So I'm kind of against any any form of media putting something out that hasn't been peer reviewed. The other article obviously is factual, so you take it from what you get from it. You know what I'm saying? I'm just reading and um, stating my opinions here and there, but you know my opinions are based on you know the stuff that is coming out. It may not be coming out on the 10 o'clock news because they're too busy scaring people, but it's coming out on the internet and it's everywhere in the internet. All you gotta do is look for it. Pop it up, it pops up in your news, you get certain news websites, it'll pop up in your phone. So, don't believe everything you see on TV or hear from the CDC. And again, the CDC is not always right. And you have to understand, and the FDA is not always right. And you, and you have to know that like politicians, the FDA can be paid and bought off. I mean, there's just board members of the FDA that are probably in the ph ph um, pharmaceutical industry. They get money from the ph pharmaceutical industry, so I'm still in all over the place, but that's, I'm gonna keep doing that from now on. And I know YouTube is planning on Doing more um, censorship on people who spread false information. I'm listen. I'm against censorship all around. I believe people have a freedom to say what they want to say as long as they're not advocating for somebody or a group of people to be killed. You know what I'm saying, right? So, um, unless it's entertainment, of course. See, I. I'm real loose when it comes to censorship. I don't believe in censorship. I mean, I'm real tight when it comes to censorship. I don't believe in it. So, I, I think YouTube is wrong. I hope YouTube re reconsiders that. Um, I have no problems with Alex Jones being on YouTube. Even if I disagree with him, I mean, was he causing people, was he stirring people up? Yeah, but I also feel that CNN is stirring people up. I also feel that Rachel Maddow is stirring people up. But she hasn't been suspended from YouTube. So you can't suspend somebody just because for, um, they're questioning the CDC. There's nothing wrong with questioning the CDC. Just like there's nothing wrong with questioning the FBI. There's nothing wrong with questioning the police. It's like there's nothing wrong with questioning Washington. That's our right. It's, the, it's a democracy, you know what I'm saying? We live in a democracy. Kind of. I'm, on the real, we probably don't, but... It's our fault if we don't live in a full democracy because we just accept everything, you know what I'm saying? We, we accept it. And I don't accept I don't accept lies. I, I look at the truth for what it is. That's why I believe in that women has a right for to an abortion. I believe in not being vaccinated. All that is a right. It's a, it's a freedom of choice. It's part of the Constitution. 
If you don't believe in the Constitution, then just say you don't believe in the Constitution. If the CDC doesn't believe in the Constitution, if Anthony Fauci doesn't believe in the Constitution, then you just say it. Just say, look, I don't believe in the Constitution. I don't believe in freedom. So we have to turn this country into the fascist country so that nobody would die from the disease. Just say that. You know what I'm saying? And let, and let then the people would decide and can make a clearer choice. But if you sugarcoat your language, people are not going to know what... I just gonna believe everything you say because you're an, an official. So that's where I stand on that. That's where I stand. I stand by human rights and the Constitution. I don't stand by Anthony Fauci, the CDC, FBI, the CIA. I don't believe. Uh, I don't and I think if you read history like I do, you know that institutions can be corrupted, can be bought off, and, and people can lie. People in power lie. They lie all the time. I mean. Politicians cheer on their wives all the time. You just don't hear about it until it blows up. So why why do we believe everything that these officials keep saying? Learn how to think for yourself. Look at the facts. There's facts there that 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 don't agree with the media and the CDC. And I, I'm just against what YouTube is doing. I hope YouTube reconsiders it because this is a matter of, of freedom. And. To this day, I can't, as a human being, as a person who is concerned about COVID-19 and people dying from COVID-19, even though I'm sure, pretty sure that most of those people had other health issues, I still can't say for sure that every single person that died from COVID-19 died from COVID-19 just because they were labeled. There was no physical autopsy done. That's not me saying that. That's the nurses, the doctors who were doing it. We're treating these patients saying that. You know what I'm saying? Um, the PCR tests are inaccurate. That's that's the guy who founded the PCR test saying that. That's not me saying that. So, and, and, and if you look at the number of people who died from influenza, I only looked at it once earlier this year, and it said that in 2021, only one person died from influenza. Now, maybe they did, they put that, put that number up. But I, I kid you not It said only one person died from influenza when Maybe when the last half of the year Or something like that Even though If you look at the numbers for influenza deaths You know it was around 22,000 a year before I think it was more than that Because there was an influenza epidemic A couple of years ago That so many people were, not, were being admitted to hospitals they, they had to put hospitals outside the beds That was a weird situation i never seen that before in my life So um, so we don't I, I can't say As a humanist As a real humanist Not like what Anthony Fauci puts as the body That he's a humanist Because he's not Because if, if Anthony Fauci was a humanist He wouldn't be working for Ronald, none of these presidents He'll be opposing every war that we've been in But he's not As a humanist I, I can't say that every single one of those people Died from COVID-19 I can't There's no proof of that there's no proof that the numbers, the PCR tests, don't are, are inaccurate. If you don't do a physical autopsy on somebody when they die, which is what a nurse and a doctor is supposed to do, then you can't really say for sure if they died from COVID-19. You say, oh, they probably died. Probably is not a definite. So, only one person died from influenza in 2020. That doesn't make any sense. From 22,000 to one. But I'm going to read it again. I'm going to see if it changed. And if it changed, I'm going to do a video saying that it changed. I'm going to do a video anyway. So, some of the stuff that I said was my opinion. But it's based on reality. It's based on what's going on out here. You know, I don't see COVID-19 being that contagious. I do see a lot of people with other issues that they get sick. A lot of people that are kind of obese, heavy. Not obese, but kind of heavy that... They're more likely to get it And um, you know like I said I'm not going to get I'm not going to tell anyone not to get vaccinated It's up to you It's up to you, you know, My mother got vaccinated my stepfather I didn't I'm not going to get vaccinated I have that choice though And that's that you know what I'm saying People have to accept that And I'm no Trump supporter <laughs> I'm, I'm a Julia Assange supporter you know, Trump tried to get Assange killed Trump was, was going to have the CIA kill Assange you know what I'm saying? Like, that's how crazy Trump is. 
I'm no Trump supporter. I'm speaking the truth. I talk about reality and I speak my opinion based on reality, based on truth, not based on people's fears and reactions and politics. Because I don't give a fuck about politics. None of these motherfuckers give a fuck about poor people. Y'all know that. You know that and I know that. These motherfuckers don't give a fuck about poor people. Anthony Fauci doesn't give a fuck about poor people. Okay, I never seen Anthony Fauci walking down the street in Best Eye telling people we're gonna we're gonna feed you, we're gonna get you off the street, we're gonna no, I have never seen him do it. Uh, do the Martin Luther King act. <laughs> I never seen him do what Martin Luther King did or Michael Evans did. So, even though that they're African American, he's white. Still, he could do something for the poor. That's that's all smoke and mirrors. He's not a humanist. You know what I'm saying? He's a he's a, he's a liar. You know what I'm saying? But um, that's all I have to say about that. You know what I'm saying? Peace.